Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tech Team GB. Today we're going to take a look at the StarTech Thunderbolt Hub. If you're in the market for a low cost Thunderbolt Hub, you'll definitely want to stay tuned for this particular video. Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up to date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. Okay guys, so if you're a somewhat of a regular watcher around here, you'll know that we like to kick off our reviews with a tour around the product. Before we delve too deep into the various IOs on this hub, the unit itself comes in at a measurement of a 189mm high by 124mm long and 70mm thick. The front IO on the device comprises of a single USB 3.0 port, a headphone and microphone jack, which I found to be a welcome addition to a product like this, as most Apple computers have a combined 3.5mm jack. Also lastly you can see you have a small little power indicator LED. Now the rear I.O. is made up of a 12 volt DC input, a gigabit ethernet port, full sized HDMI port, dual Thunderbolt ports, one of which can be used for daisy chaining devices, as well as two more USB 3.0 ports. Now the sides on the device are relatively plain, although have some small cutouts for ventilation. The one on the left hand side has two threaded screw holes, which allows you to remove or connect the removable stand. One aspect that I wasn't much of a fan of about the device was its gloss finish. This is due to the fact that it makes it somewhat of a fingerprint magnet as well as showing up dust much easier. Something like this really isn't a deal breaker although I would have preferred a matte finish or even an aluminium body. As I touched upon earlier the device can be placed in two different orientations, either lying flat or standing vertically up on the stand. The problem with lining it flat is that StarTech expects you to install these little rubber feet yourself which wouldn't be much of a problem if they had placed grooves for the feet to sit in. As it currently stands you have to pretty much guess whether they're installed equally and in the right place. You could choose to not install them at all although you run the risk of the device getting scratched when it slides around or just sliding around in general which could cause some aggravation when connecting devices. The feet on the vertical stand however did a fairly okay job of keeping the device in one place. As you can see the stand has two notches which line up with the vents making it easier to screw the device in as it doesn't slip around. The base itself is a big lump of metal at the bottom which helps it to make the device much more bottom heavy which in turn stops it from sliding around and toppling over. Now one thing that really stood out to me about this particular Thunderbolt hub is that it actually comes with a Thunderbolt cable. To the average person this might not sound like a very big deal at all, although the vast majority of Thunderbolt devices don't actually come with the cable. Now some of you might be thinking, well I'll just buy one separately right? Yes, you can do this, although by taking a look at some of the prices you'll understand why this isn't so much of an easy fix. The power supply might seem like a boring topic to talk about, so I'll only touch upon it lightly. The specifications allow it to give out a maximum output of 5 amps at 12 volts, which will allow you to charge a vast range of devices such as smartphones and other USB compatible charging devices. Now this is great as compared to some other things like USB hubs, this thing can actually charge your devices fast, whereas USB hubs tend to be about as much use as a potato for charging. Now really stress testing a device like this can be fairly difficult, so what I decided to do was load it up with about as much things as I could possibly do so. I connected one USB 3.0 drive, two USB 2.0 drives, a 1080p display, a pair of headphones and a Thunderbolt USB converter which had one of the USB devices connected to it. All of which worked simultaneously without any issues. Now one thing that I was relatively intrigued to find out is if there was any speed differences thus connecting it directly to the MacBook or connecting it through to the StarTech hub first. So what I decided to do was connecting a 3.5 inch drive to the StarTech and then running Blackmagic Disk Benchmark on the USB 3.0 drive. I found that I got an average read of around about 96 megabytes per second and an average write of around about 82 megabytes per second. I then done exactly the same test, but this time instead of connecting it to the StarTech hub, I connected it straight to the MacBook, and found that I had pretty much exactly the same scores as when connecting it straight to the hub, meaning that there's basically no notable performance impact, which is exactly what you want. Now onto my overall opinions on the device. As it goes, I think it's probably one of the best Thunderbolt hubs for the money, and as it currently stands at around about £165 on Amazon, which is around about £10 cheaper than its competition. Now don't quote me on any of that pricing as prices tend to change quite frequently on Amazon but that pricing isn't even taking into account the cable costs so you're perhaps even looking at a £30 saving compared to some of the competition once you factor that in. 
The only real two gripes that I had with the device was its flat mounting issue seemed to be somewhat of an afterthought and the gloss finish wasn't particularly to my taste although it might be to yours, both of which can be overlooked quite easily. Overall if you're in the market for a reasonably priced Thunderbolt hub this one is definitely worth taking a look at. Now onto the final scores, for value for money it's going to get a 5 out of 5, this in no way means that it's cheap, although price is relative and compared to the rest of its competition it's quite a fair amount cheaper. For performance it's also getting a 5 as it performs as well as connecting a device straight to the MacBook so what more could you really want? For functionality it's also going to get a 5 as it has all the connections that I could possibly want and it all worked perfectly well. For style I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 as although it's not a bad looking device the glossy finish certainly wasn't to my taste although that doesn't mean it's not to yours and the orientation makes it lose a point here as well. Overall I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5, it came close to getting a 5 out of 5 although some of the physical design features let it down slightly. Lastly the product is also going to get the Tech Team GB Worth Money Award. So thanks for watching this Tech Team GB video. Uh, you've probably heard enough of me already, so I'm going to finish off by saying please subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out a hell of a lot, and it means that just the world is in general. Please do feel free to check out some of our recent videos both down below. Um, they're uh, more recent ones, and they're certainly awesome. Uh, feel free to click my face for the website, and click all the links over there for our Amazon affiliate uh, link, our social media, and also our YouTube channel as well. Other than that, as I said, please subscribe, like, share, favourite and all the other many things possible and we'll see you all in the next video.